We talked about Slack in the previous video, but we did not discuss the possibility of there being negative Slack. So let's look at this pipeline. It consists of three paths, one, two, and three, each lying between a pair of registers. So uh, let's just assume that this is the waveform of the nodes W, X, and Z. The nodes W, X, and Z are the output nodes of each of the combinational paths, one, two, and three. So they are, they are the inputs of the second register in uh, each of the path. Now, let's see when the outputs W, X, and Z change so let's assume that W changes at this point. Uh, this means that uh, path one has positive slack and the amount of positive slack can be measured by the time that W has changed and T setup time before the active edge. So we do not measure relative to the active edge. We just measure uh, relative to the point T setup. So we call this slack one and slack one is obviously uh, positive. What this means essentially is that path one is going to work properly because it is ready ahead of when it needs to, which is fine. Uh, but we will also discover shortly that this means that uh, path one is working a little bit harder than it needs to. I mean, it finishes earlier than it needs to. Again, it's important to point out that if path one has multiple possible delay values because it passes through multiple possible logic gates or because through the same logic gate there are best cases and worst cases, then we have to take the worst case when we are doing all these calculations. So the uh, point at which W changes on the graph has to be the latest point at which W changes for the worst case when the least amount of, uh, of current is discharging or charging the output node capacitance. Now let's look at point X and let's just assume that point X uh, changes um, at, at this point, at the point where T setup is. That means that uh, the slack for path 2 is 0, so slack 2 is equal to 0. So slack 1 is positive and slack 2 is 0. What this means is that for this uh, clock period that we are using, for the clock frequency that we are using in this graph, um, path 2 is a critical path because it is ready just exactly at the time that it needs to be ready. Now let's look at path, path uh, Z and when it is ready. And let's assume that path Z has a transition that happens here. And it is important to notice that this transition could happen before the active edge or after the active edge. We don't really care when, when it happens relative to the active edge. What we care about is that it happened later than T setup time before the active edge. So we are measuring against the point where we have T set up before the active edge. So Z is going to be a path with a negative slack, whether or not it has changed after the active edge, as long as it has changed after more than T set up time before the active edge. So this is going to have negative slack, because if we measure slack relative to this line, then this means that this amount is negative. So what does it mean that path three has negative slack? First of all, it means that the value at Z will not be registered properly. Why? Because for the value to be regist registered properly, we have to respect the setup time. That's what, how a register works. If the input changes at or before setup time before the active edge, then the output will change exactly TCQ after the active edge. What if we do not respect the setup time? What if we allow the input to change, the input to the register, that is, to change um, closer to the active edge than setup time? Then we have what is called a setup time violation. So negative slack is synonymous with setup time violation. So what does setup time violation mean at a fundamental physical level? Uh, it means that the, this register, the output register of path 3, is not going to have enough time for its input, input Z, to be latched properly in the master latch. The output from this register after TCQ is going to be wrong. It might occasionally be okay, but in general it's going to be wrong. And why is that a disaster? Because this output from the register is then going to be used as an input to another path, and this input is going to be wrong and the whole circuit is going to fail. So seeing negative slack means that we have seen a setup time violation.
Seeing a setup time violation means that we have a failure. This is a failure of the circuit and the circuit cannot be operated in this condition. So, okay, we have a problem. We have negative slack. Um, how do we solve it? In fact, setup time violations can be solved very easily. Uh, there's a, a very simple solution to this, which is reduce clock frequency, right? So if you reduce clock frequency, which is equivalent to increasing the clock period, you will eventually solve this problem. But how much do we need to extend the clock frequency, uh, the clock period? By how much does T need to be extended? So if the original clock period was T capital, if this was the uh, first active edge, and this distance was T capital, then by how much does T capital need to be uh, extended? by exactly as much time as there is negative slack. So basically increase T by the absolute amount of slack 3. What this would do is that it would push this active edge by the amount of negative slack to the right. And when you do this, then Z will have changed at a setup time before the active edge. And what we would have done in this case is that we would have moved the critical path to path 3. We would end up with a situation in which path 3 has zero slack. Path 2 now has slack 2 plus absolute value slack 3, which means it no longer has a zero slack, but has a positive slack equal to the absolute value of uh, slack 3. And uh, path 1 will have an even more positive slack, which will increase by an amount of absolute value slack 3. In fact, if you get a finished chip, and this finished chip is not working at the clock frequency that you expected, and you lower the clock frequency and it starts working, this is a sure sign that you have a setup time violation. Setup time violation is just a fancy way of saying that we are not respecting the critical path, right? That we expected our critical path to have a certain delay and it had a, a longer delay than we expected. By how much? By however much there is negative slack. So this is the simplest solution to setup time violation. And it's actually a very practical way to de detect that you have setup time violations. So um, let's assume that we do not want to reduce our operating frequency and still want to uh, fix the setup time violation. What do we do? And the answer is, obviously, we have to uh, internally pipeline at least the offending path so we can cut path 3 at some point. And let's just assume that we have now two new paths, 3A and 3B, and we insert a register in between them. Now, we would have the node Z and also a new node Y. What this will cause is uh, the delay through 3B and 3A to become shorter. And so if we draw the clock edge again, so if we look at the active edge and T setup before the active edge, and we look at um, the outputs of uh, the uh, internally pipeline path Y and Z, we will notice that both of them will change ahead of when we needed them to, because the path is now shorter. How can we ensure this? We can ensure it by doing pipelining properly. We can decide where to cut path 3 properly so that the new situation does not cause us to observe uh, negative slack. So uh, by how much do we need to cut? By as much time as the, new, the two new paths will have uh, non-negative slack, will have at least zero slack. And so if we do this pipelining, then our, our critical path will actually migrate back to X and we will have the original operating frequency that we expected. I will um, reiterate again that for all the paths, when we calculate the propagation delay, we have to calculate the worst case propagation delay. So when we are trying to find slacks and setup time violations, we will always use the worst case delays for each of the paths. We will look for the worst combination of uh, logic gates within the path. We will look for the worst inputs that will activate the largest amount of resistance in the uh, combinational path, and that is the value of delay that we will use.